Hey guys, I hope you're all doing alright, and welcome back to the B1N4G4 channel, and I'm back, once again, and this time for another Top 5 video, because it's been a while since I've done one of those, and this time I'm going to be talking about things that non-F1, or just non-most sport in general type people say. Now of course everyone is entitled to an opinion, and not everyone has to love a bunch of overpriced bits of carbon fibre drive around in circles, which will bring me on to my first point. But I feel like you should have some understanding um, of the um, situation before judging it, which is not where a lot of these infuriating sayings come from. Now onto my first point, F1 cars, or just any race cars, just drive around in circles. Now if you know what a circle looks like, then you can probably tell me that this is not a circle, nor is this, nor is this. Like even NASCAR doesn't use circles, but of course that's not the point, they're still going around the same bit of road over and over again. Now this by no means is false, but also the biggest oversimplification of things ever. When you take into account stuff like weather, strategy, car setup, and appreciate how good it feels to go through corners like Maggots and Beckers and Eau Rouge, just to name a few, like even on a game, every track has so much character and entertainment for both the viewer and the driver. Except Sochi, but that's past the point. The point is, it's more than just a circle. It's a bit like saying the football pitch is just a rectangle where a bunch of people with crazy hair run around kicking a sphere made by a starving child in Southeast Asia. There's obviously more to that. So similarly, shouldn't motorsport be getting the same treatment? I mean, both are sports with highly skilled athletes who are... Uh oh Saying number 2 and 3. F1 drivers aren't athletes, and F1 doesn't count as a sport. Let's address the first point first. Answer this. If your heart was beating at 170 to 180 times per minute for over 1.5 hours, experiencing 5G on the next so that it feels like your head was 40 kilograms, burning thousands of calories at blistering heat, all the while having to react to the very millisecond to avoid disaster, would you be considered an athlete? Of course. Take one look at the training drivers go through these days to stay in peak physical condition, and it tells you exactly what you need to know. People often think that since the drivers just sit in a car and drive around, which is an everyday task, they're not athletes, and a sport where you just sit down and twist a wheel is not a sport, bringing me nicely onto my third saying, that F1 is not a sport. A sport by definition is an activity that involves physical exertion, and as we established before, drivers do get very physical, so what's the fuss? The main thing I see is that drivers rely heavily on a machine, or the car. It won't really count as a sport, which is a reason as to why racing is not part of the Olympics. However, you have to understand that the car is basically the ball in football. Without it, the athletes have nothing to get physical with, so pinning the fact that F1 is supposedly not a sport on that is just... On to saying four, it's that F1 is so predictable, so why bother? And to an extent, this is true. There's a massive chance there will be a Mercedes or Red Bull or Mazepin winning the race, but that's not really why a lot of fans watch it. Now don't get me wrong, the winner is always important, especially in a championship fight, but I've always seen people more hooked onto the actual side-by-side -side racing, on-the-spot strategy calls and unexpected weather changes than when the driver like Hamilton or Verstappen or Mazepin crosses the line. And the fact that it's usually the same person who wins makes us treasure moments like Pierre Gasly and Sergio Perez in 2020 and Esteban Ocon this year, as they feel much greater than others. The eventual order doesn't really matter unless it's a fight boiling down to the last few races, as much as the actual racing on track. And finally, at number 5, F1 is expensive and drivers are overpaid. Now the first point I understand, not everyone can afford to pay over £100 for Sky Sports, or just to visit an event, but high prices are somewhat worth it. Firstly, it means teams will get more money at the end of each season to develop their cars. It also means that all those that work to get the sport from country to country, as well as make sure everyone is safe, gets paid properly. As, of course, we know, with a calendar like this, those people are going to get really tired. As for driver's pay, consider the fact that they're risking their lives just to entertain us. Surely they should be given a substantial salary. I mean, look at footballers who get hundreds of millions for kicking a ball around. Why should F1 be any different? Well guys, that's it for today's video. If you did enjoy, then be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content. And share this video with someone who has said some of these things to you. I've been B1M4G4, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.